Welcome to part two of Making the Most of Math Journals. The purpose of this session is to reflect on how we are currently using our math journals and to examine some tips for making journals even more successful. In this session, we will review tips for using math journals as identified in part one of Making the Most of Math Journals. We will define the term interactive notebook and we will examine strategies for turning your math journals into interactive notebooks. Let's start by discussing what math journals are not. I have seen teachers with really great intentions become overwhelmed with math journals because of what they think journals need to be. Most of these notions ended up coming from Pinterest, teacher blogs, and teachers pay teachers. Please remember the journals are not meant to be an extra thing in your classroom. They're just meant to enhance what you're already doing. If you are spending most of the time having your students cut things just to get them into the journals, they're probably not being used correctly. More importantly, journals aren't meant to be used for a piece of art or artwork. They're just supposed to be a place that is organized and houses what students are already doing in the classroom anyways, even if that journal didn't exist, so that students can refer back to their notes. However, the focus should not be on making them look pretty and colorful. In our first session, I do recommend the students have access to colored pencils, crayons, or markers. This is for labeling important information. This is also for highlighting because research tells us that green helps us to remember and yellow helps us to focus in on information. Journals are also not meant to be something extra that takes an exorbitant amount of time. I've seen activities like this on your screen take an entire class period to color, cut, and glue. The entire lesson becomes about creating something for the journal rather than focusing around a mathematical goal. Instead, think about what you're already doing in class. If you're using fraction manipulatives, encourage students to record some of their work in their journals. Or, if students have a recording sheet, have them insert it or part of it into their journal. Just make sure to label important information so it becomes a meaningful tool that students can refer back to. Remember, the purpose of journals is for students to have opportunities to organize their thinking, record visual models of their work, try new strategies, and take notes. Journals give students repeated access to information, which causes a transfer to long-term memory. Journals can be seen as a permanent record of student learning. If students consistently record their learning in their journals, this can almost become a textbook that students can take home to study from and help with their homework. In part one, we discuss the need for several tools. My favorite tools are a three-ring three binder because they can easily house work that was completed during class. They can also house tools that can easily be removed uh, for use throughout the school year. Teachers have expressed that using binders also makes it easy to add information if a student was absent versus reminding that student to skip a page or two in their notebooks and add the new information later. The other tool that I really like is sticky notes. I often start lessons by giving students a problem to grapple with in their journal. I use this to assess prior knowledge and to guide instruction for that day. However, students often make mistakes when they're grappling. Therefore, I make sure to allow time at the end of the lesson for students to change or add to their thinking using a sticky note. The sticky note is placed over their previous work. This allows teacher and parent to see the learning progression for that day rather than leaving an incorrect answer permanently documented in their journal. One of the most important things we discussed in part one was, when could I use a journal in my classroom? The answer was, throughout your entire lesson. During the appetizer, you might reflect on prior learning by reviewing previous information in your journal. During course one, you might have students grapple with a problem or meaningful math task. Then, during course two, new information is directly taught to the class. It may be that the teacher models a new strategy or new vocabulary is introduced. I would probably start course two by saying something like, boys and girls, we just grappled with a problem. Some of you used repeated addition to solve that problem. Some of you used a picture. Today, I'm going to model a new strategy for solving problems like that. During course two, students may take notes on this new strategy in their journal, 
Or the teacher may give them a chart or table outlining the steps of the new strategy, and this can be glued into their journal. Lastly, during course three, students should have time to independently practice the new learning. It may be that students resolve the problem from the beginning of the lesson, or they solve a new, similar problem. So, what does this actually look like in the student's journal? In the years that I found journals to be the most successful, I've divided them into two sides. One side was for the student work, and the other side was for the new information. Some teachers refer to this as a student page and teacher page. Here is an example of a kindergarten journal. On the right side, the students started the lesson by grappling with a task. They were asked to add three apples plus two bees. The rest of the lesson focused all around on the other ways that they can make five. Students were taught to use a tool called a math mountain. This was from math expressions. And students, as students were working with the math mountain work mats, the teacher assistant glued many copies of the math mountains into the journal. And that's where you see course two listed here. Lastly, students had an opportunity to resolve the problem using the new strategy. Here, this new work was done directly below the new tool, um, but it also could have been completed on a sticky note on top of that tool one. Now that we've discussed what journals are and are not, we will spend the rest of this video looking at how to make journals more interactive. Journals should interact with all parts of the math lesson. Journals should be a, a tool for the teacher to interact with the students. They should be a tool for the students to interact with each other. They should also be a tool where students can interact with the journal at home or study from it at home. And it should also be an opportunity for parents um, to observe these interactions, become part of the learning, and monitor student progress. As the last slide states, the journal should be a tool for the teacher and student to interact. Part of this means having a student page in the journal to record thoughts and grapple while the teacher has this teacher side to give new information. The other part of making this an inter interactive tool between the teacher and student is communication. Making sure that the teacher is giving feedback and making sure that the students have opportunities to respond and make changes based on this feedback. Today we're going to type, talk about two types of feedback, one being a rubric and the other one being student-teacher dialogue where the student's doing some writing, the teacher is responding to it, and then the students have an opportunity to go back and make changes or respond to that writing as well. Students must have opportunities to respond to that feedback and make corrections in order to, be, in order to grow and have new learning take place. If you decide to use rubrics, be sure to establish expectations, scoring policies, and the purpose of journals with your students. Communicate these expectations and the importance of journals with parents. Here are two sample rubric templates. You can access these templates on the link listed on your screen, or you can also find the hyperlink below the YouTube video in the comments section. Things that you may want to include in your rubric are things like completion, effort, neatness, precision, and communication. You do not want to include accuracy or proficiency in the rubric because a journal is a place where students are recording their learning process and skills may not yet be mastered at this point. Because we will not be assessing mastery at this point, these scores would not be recorded as grades in a gradebook. This document is also included in the link listed below this YouTube video in the comments section. It outlines considerations for the criteria listed on the previous slide. After sharing these expectations of the rubric, have students adhere the rubric to the inside front cover of their notebook so they may frequently reference it. Once a rubric has been established, you would need to decide if the teacher or student will be the one scoring the work. My suggestion would be that once the teacher has scored the work several times, transition to the student scoring. This frees up time for the teacher and holds the student accountable for knowing whether or not their work is of quality. Another way to give feedback is through student-teacher dialogue. Here we can see that what 
Another way to give feedback is through student-teacher dialogue. Here, we can see what students are thinking and respond to their thinking. This really allows us to build off of what students know and helps us to grow all learners. Student-teacher dialogue normally occurs after the teaching takes place. This is an opportunity for students to reflect on new learning and ask questions. Then, the teacher can respond to this new learning, probe deeper, and ask follow-up questions or provide follow-up support. Exit slips are a great way for students to reflect on new learning and ask questions about new learning. The differentiated writing prompts at the end of each math expressions lesson are also a great way to show and apply new learning. These allow students to all reflect on the same concept or skill, but are leveled to allow learners an opportunity to reflect in a way that is meaningful to them. One of my favorite ways to write about new learning is called chat and write cards. Here, I developed a variety of questions, all focusing around the same concept. I usually pull some of the questions from the math expressions writing prompts and from the lessons, the questions within their lessons. Then students can select a question to answer. This may happen in a math station or independently at their seats. It really doesn't matter which card students select since they are all around the same concept. However, you could ask students to pick a new question at the end of each lesson throughout the week, and then by the end of the week, students would have responded to all questions. For more ideas on writing within math, check out my Symbaloo page at the link on your screen. Whether you are using a rubric with your students or student-teacher dialogue, be sure that your feedback is corrective. This feedback can happen in written form or while conferencing with a student. This feedback can greatly benefit students because they often do not know what was done well and where they need to improve. Further, students who have done work correctly often do not know how to grow from there. A great reference tool in giving students feedback is a set of math practice standards. All classrooms should have copies of the math practice standards posters. When giving corrective feedback, students should when giving corrective feedback, teachers should make observations about what the students did understand and should ask questions to dig deeper, fix misunderstandings, and apply the practice standards. Corrective Even if a student's thinking is completely correct, the teacher could ask a question based on the practice standards. For example, how could you prove that your solution is correct? What is another way you could use math to model this situation? Could you model it with a drawing, using math symbols? If you were faced with another problem like this, what tools might you use next time? What would you do differently? I hope you've enjoyed this video and discovered new ways to make journals into interactive notebooks.